In the field of astrophotography, there's nothing quite as exciting as buying a new lens. And in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing one that I've been looking forward to for quite a while. The Samyang 135mm f2. This lens comes highly recommended from some friends of mine in my local astronomy club because it is a light bucket. Fully open at f2, it can still get pinpoint stars across the entire field of view, which is exactly what you want when you're doing astrophotography. Let's open up the box and see what we have. This will be my second primary lens for astrophotography. I shoot with a Canon EF 50 millimeter, and this at 135 millimeters will be my second one. And here is the lens right here. And this is uh, heavier than I expected. It's only about two pounds, but Compared to the 50 millimeter that I use, it's about 0.4 pounds. This is uh, a very hefty piece of glass. Um, it is a manual focus lens, which is all you need uh, and what you would prefer to use for astrophotography. Some of the things I love about this is just the design of the dial system, how it looks and how it clicks in manually as you're changing the f-stop or adjusting the internal focus ring on it. Very impressed by the build quality of this. The mount that I use is black and red, and I like that this is black and red as well. That's a little thing, but cosmetic things like that can uh, look really cool at least. This is very nice, and I'm looking forward to using this soon. Also in the box, we have what's actually a very nice travel bag. That's a nice accessory that they include for you to carry around your new lens and keep it protected at least a little more. And we also have what I'm sure is an incredibly useful instruction manual. Now let's take a closer look at what this lens is in terms of its specifications and how you can use it to take incredible images of the nighttime sky. As we move on to take a closer look at the performance and specs of this lens, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy these types of reviews. One important thing to mention right off the bat is some confusion that I found online regarding the Samyang and Rokinon lenses. Simply put, these are the exact same lens just with a different name put on them. Apparently it's some type of branding decision that the parent company has made. What I would suggest you to do is just go with the cheapest option that you have for where you live. For me, that was the Samyang lens and buying it saved me about $20 compared to the Rokinon. When researching what lens to buy for astrophotography, there are several important factors to consider, one of which is the F number. On this Samyang lens, you can shoot at F2, which lets in a tremendous amount of light. To show the difference the F number can have on a lens's light gathering ability, let's look at some of the different aperture sizes of this lens. By manually clicking from F2 to F5.6, you can see how much smaller the aperture is, thus letting in less light compared to f2. The true beauty of this lens comes from the fact that even shooting at f2, you can still get incredibly sharp images across the entire field of view, and that's not always the case for every lens. The second thing that sold me on this lens was its fixed 135mm focal length. Prime lenses are preferable to zoom lenses because the design of their lens often leads to sharper images across the entire field of view. And when you're talking about pinpoint stars with astrophotography, that's exactly what you want. Another benefit to this 135mm lens is that it's kind of a sweet spot for the current setup that I have for my imaging and tracking mount. At a little under two pounds, it's the perfect weight for my SkyGuider Pro matched with my DSLR camera and isn't going to stress out the motors and isn't going to push it to the extreme of what it can do in terms of doing long exposure photography of the nighttime sky. Now let's take a look at how much of the sky you'll actually be able to image with a 135 millimeter lens. This is going to depend partially on what type of camera and sensor that you're using. We're going to be comparing today a full frame and APS-C sensor of a Canon DSLR to show the difference in the field of view of the nighttime sky. Let's take a look at the constellation Orion for this example. If you're shooting on a full frame DSLR sensor, 
135 millimeters will cover an area of the sky that will allow you to image everything from the Bernard Loop down to Rigel within the constellation Orion. My Canon SL2, however, uses an APS-C crop sensor, meaning that it will basically crop in an extra 1.6 times. This means that I'll be getting in closer on the constellation Orion, which will leave out details like the Bernard Loop and Rigel, but will also get me in a little bit closer on things like the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula itself. Now let's go outside and do a real-world test of how this lens works imaging the nighttime sky. I'm outside on a beautiful but cold night to put this lens to the test by imaging the constellation Orion. Few things test a new lens like astrophotography, from pinpoint stars to faint deep sky objects. We're going to put this lens through its paces to see how it does across the entire field of view from dim stars to bright stars to the Orion Nebula. For this imaging session, I'm using the Canon SL2 attached obviously to the Samyang 135mm lens. It's fully open at f2. I'm shooting at ISO 200 and I'm doing 20 second exposures. I've taken 100 of those 20 second exposures and stacked them to about 32 minutes worth of data. Along with flat, bias, and dark frames, I put it into Deep Sky Stacker and then did the final post-processing in PixInsight. Now the detail of your images will vary from mine due to things like light pollution, exposure times, and post-processing. But the main thing I really want to point out is the sharpness of this lens, fully open at f2. From the faintest stars in the corner of the image, to the flame and horsehead nebulas, to the incredible detail of the Orion Nebula, with its nursery of dynamic gas clouds creating stars. Across the entire field of view, be it a faint star, or a bright star, or a deep sky object, the image is sharp and clear. The Samyang 135mm f2 easily lives up to its hype and should be near the top of your list of purchases if you're new or experienced in astrophotography. If you're using or looking to buy the Samyang 135mm f2, Please let me know what you're imaging with it or any questions you may have in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.